What's up everyone and welcome to a very special bonus episode of Pokemon Sage Version. Last time we actually completed the first demo by defeating the first gym, but you can see today we're actually playing a completely different save file because I picked the girl character and we've got a little cap egg following us, which is not really a uh, Pokemon that we're not used to seeing or anything. But if we check out the Pokemon menu, you will notice I've actually picked up the grass starter in this playthrough. So I did want to go ahead and do a bonus video showing off the other two starters. So in this playthrough I picked up Foliat the grass starter been pretty cool so far I gotta say it learns Mega Drain which is its best attack so far uh, it's not really too strong compared to Ogwade and I haven't actually tried the fire one yet but so far it's been really fun using Foliat you might also notice I finally caught Sonome here I don't know how but I randomly ran into one in the cave I seriously tried training for some couple of hours in the previous episode, uh, training up Harpy to evolve, and I never ran into a Sylm in the same cave, but this time around I happened to run into one, and we even caught it on the very first try. So here is Snome, the troll Pokemon. Pretty much my Pokemon. I feel like I'm kind of a troll, so maybe this is my spirit animal or spirit Pokemon in this case. But either way, we do have a very awesome bonus episode today. We're going to be taking on the gym once again and trying to get a double evolution, same as the last episode, except with two new Pokemon. We've got the Grass Starter and Capig, who actually evolves at level 20. So we're going to try to evolve both of those. And because you guys have been so awesome and loving this series, I wanted to do a little bit more before we move on to another playthrough. I wanted to, I guess, go through Pokemon Sage one more time and try to show off everything in it. But... That is not all, because today is also a very special day, as we have the return of one of my favorite things on this channel, and that is the fan art spotlight. So I've put together the fan art we got throughout this playthrough, and we're going to check it out right now, starting off with the three characters of this game, I guess the two protagonists and the rival, though technically all three of them could be your rivals, and I really love this because they have so much personality in their faces, and you can definitely see kind of what they're each like, so awesome job on this, I love the art style. Next up, we've got this awesome artwork with the munching orange character enjoying his time with a couple of the Pokemon Sage Pokemon. Of course, we've got the water starter Ogwade, the so, so cute Cub Zero, and of course, Capeg, who managed to sneak our way onto our head somehow, or my head. I never really know how to talk about the character munching orange, because I don't know if it's me. Am I me? Who are you? I don't know, but we're going to move on to the next fan art, which is, of course, Ogwade once again looking super cute here. Love it. I just like this Pokemon. It's so cute. And he's even in another fan art here with the character once again that I don't know if to refer it to in third person or not. But he's definitely super cute, even wearing the hat that the Pokemon Sage character wears as well. Remick Ranger actually doubled up on fan arts for us today because here is another one, this time with Cub Zero, who we didn't quite get to use too much in the playthrough. Unfortunately, it evolves a little bit too high level, so I don't think we're going to be able to get him that high level. Um, in this current demo of the game, but who knows in the future. Either way, thank you guys so much for the awesome fan art. Unfortunately, this playthrough was a little bit short-lived, so not much room for fan art there. But yeah, if you guys are excited for one more time, one more round in the Urobos region, make sure to hit that like button. And thank you again for all of the support so far on the series. It's been awesome, and it seems like you guys really enjoy this game, which I mean, I really like this game so far too. So I hope something comes of it in the future. Who knows? I honestly sometimes even think to myself like man Pokemon should really just somehow buy these ideas for Pokemon at least because there's some really cool ones in the Pokedex that I've seen like I was actually trying to research not really research but you know look around more in depth in the wiki and read about some of the abilities and moves that some of those Pokemon get and there are some really really sick ones in there like I don't know I guess it, it's pretty crazy for Game Freak to actually buy the ideas for fan-made Pokemon I guess but I feel like at some point they it wouldn't be that bad if they did because there's some really really good ideas for fan Pokemon not just in this game but just on the internet in general man there's you guys come up with a lot of really cool stuff uh, for Pokemon ideas so who knows maybe in the future when Game Freak one day says man we are just clean out of ideas it seems like they're already having a lot of writers block issues with coming up with Pokemon designs and I don't know man it just seems like to me a lot of the ideas or they get writer's block because so many ideas have already been used in fan arts or in Pokemon fan games and things like that. So who knows what will happen with the future of Pokemon. But it's one thing is for certain is Sun and Moon is on the horizon. Wow. I want to say no pun intended, but I feel like the puns just come to me naturally now. The horizon, Sun and... Anyway, um, 
Pokemon Sun and Moon is on the horizon, and I can't wait to see what kind of new Pokemon there are in that game. Like, honestly, one of the best things about Pokemon is the Pokemon themselves, the designs and the ideas that they sometimes put forth, so yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. Anyway, we do have to focus up on this gym battle because um, I feel like actually picking the Foliat has been a little bit more of a challenge because... First of all, almost every Pokemon you encounter out in the wild is actually an Ice type, and while most of them didn't have Ice type moves while I was getting up to this point, um, it was still a bit of a struggle at least to keep Folia alive. Like, well, actually, it was more of a struggle to keep this Capig alive. Capig kept on dying, and uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but I mentioned it evolves at level 20, so there's still four more levels to go on this thing. I really hope Capig doesn't attack us. Oh man, that would suck. No, the rollout. Oh man. Okay, maybe I'm gonna need to focus up actually a little bit. I thought this would just be a breeze and I would talk about um, some other ideas I had for Sun and Moon and for other fan games in the future, but I guess I gotta focus up at least a little bit. And by that I mean just spam the heck out of tackles, so never mind. Either way, I'm just really excited, I guess, because I was uh, reading a lot of the comments and uh, you guys seem to have some really cool ideas as well for the future. I just think this game is definitely a step in a good direction. Like, I, I really enjoy it, so I hope uh, we see some more of it in the future, but as for now, I guess this made me want to explore all the rest of this. So there is actually one more Pokemon that we haven't seen yet in here, um, and we can actually fight him after we defeat the gym leader. I was actually going to show it off in the last episode, but uh, it seemed a little bit long, so I decided, you know, let's do a bonus episode. I did want to show off the other starters evolutions as well, so right now we're unfortunately not really going to get to do that because Folia is dead. Uh, so hopefully Capig can actually take down this bluff in here. Oh no, not if we get tickled. Oh man, what am I gonna do now? It's just such a weird move, tickle, at least the name of it. Like, I don't know, can you really imagine Bluffin coming up and starts tickling Capig? Not only is that the cutest thing I've ever just described, but this is pretty interesting. <laughs> I guess the way that tickle lowers attack and defense. I mean, it makes sense, actually. I think I'm getting a cold from staying in that snowman. Oh, that's not good, buddy. Come on, I mean, it's fun to play inside of- actually, what seems fun about playing inside of a snowman? Like, building a snowman is one thing, but living inside of one, bro, I don't- I don't really know what you were going with that there. Um, maybe it's fun for that kid, who knows, but at least when I was playing in the snow, it was a little bit painful, actually, like, afterwards, when your hands sit in the snow for too long, so... Definitely sitting inside of a snowman for that long. Just doesn't sound like a fun time, bro. So, I don't know what you're up to, but you do you, bro. Anyway, this Bluffin is, once again, Bluffin has actually been kind of tough to take. Oh, no, we got a critical hit. Just kidding. Just when I was about to mention that Bluffin was getting a little tougher, but not really. I kind of hope I have a potion, but I don't think I have any left. Oh, man, that's not good. So, Capig, will you be able to handle this fawning? I highly doubt it, but... It's all good because we can actually show off this other new Pokemon here, Snome. He does have Prankster ability, but I don't think that's really too helpful right now. I mean, Prankster is a cool ability, just not in this situation exactly against spawning here. So we'll instead just Powder Snow it up and see how much. Oh, that actually does a good amount of damage. So Capig could definitely come in and take this guy out eventually. I still can't believe we found this Pokemon though. I, I was just doing, like I wasn't even trying to train. I was actually going through the Downward Cave as normal and ran into it, yet when I was training up uh, in the last episode, I fought so many Pokemon in the Downward Cave and just never went into one. I think I actually even ran into two Snomes. So yeah, I just found it kind of funny that when you're not looking for something is when you most easily find it. And I feel like that's uh, the thing with a lot of situations in life. Really, things kind of seem to come to you when you least expect them, so. Expect the unexpected is what I'm trying to say right now. Um, I also realized that Capig did learn Hyper Fang and I'm not sure why I'm not using it, so let's go for a... Wow. Maybe that's why I'm not using it, because it totally just missed. And why am I even fighting this thing right now? I should have gone and healed up. Okay, maybe in this gym specifically, it's really not good to have Foliat on your team, just because I think she's actually going to evolve into a grass and flying type. That means you're four times weak to ice. And yeah, this gym is not going to be a fun time for you, so maybe it's actually smarter that we haven't evolved Foliat just yet, but it's whatever. We do have Capig to mostly take that on, uh, so I'm going to try my best. We're still going to try to evolve this thing. By the way, Pengliff has Peck. Yeah, that was a problem sometimes as well, so I guess just picking the Grass Starter is kind of the hard mode in a way for this game. Like, I feel like Pokemon is definitely, a lot of times people complain about difficulty in Pokemon, but... 
I like Pokemon because the difficulty is actually kind of set by yourself. Like if you want to go ahead and pick up all the strongest Pokemon and sweep through the game, you can do that by all means. I mean, they even give you legendary Pokemon that make it super easy. But uh, in my opinion, like the difficulty in Pokemon comes from whatever you choose to use. So if you want to, you know, run at it with some Pokemon that maybe aren't quite so strong, but you just enjoy personally, I don't know, you do you, man. Like literally you can make the difficulty yourself. And actually right now that's kind of showing because even though I wanted to pick Folia just to get it to evolve, we really can't do that just because this Bluffin is actually difficult to take out with it. Um, so yeah, definitely if you want more of a challenge, at least in this game, I, I would say the Grass Starter will give you that. But then again, you know, you can make up for your weaknesses in Ice with other Pokemon later on, I'm assuming. Um, like Coblin evolves into a Fire type, I know that. Anyway, we didn't quite get Foliat to evolve, so it looks like we're gonna have to battle the gym leader. Whoa, what happened to the slopes? They got a little bit dark there. I think what I'm gonna do is actually just head outside for a little bit. We're gonna evolve this Foliat, and uh, then I guess we'll take on the gym leader with Capig because I just don't think Foliat will do too hot in that battle. Actually, I'm curious if I can even take on the gym leader. Huh, maybe this episode actually turned into something way more interesting. This is the Nuzlocke challenge right now, the Pokemon Sage Nuzlocke, even though Pokemon kind of already died, so not sure. I think I would have lost a Nuzlocke at this point, but whatever, the challenge is on. Let's go, Foliat. Can you take out the Ice-type gym leader? Probably not, but if you do, you're gonna get to evolve, buddy. Or actually, this was a really bad idea. I should have gone and evolved first and then taken this guy on, but you know what? Who cares now? Let's see. We're, we're gonna take on the challenge for sure. Um, if you're wondering about the name Jade, by the way, I actually thought it was kind of cool because uh, the character is green and Jade is kind of a color. So, you know, I usually go for orange, which is a color. And actually, most Pokemon trainers, at least towards the beginning of the games, were always named after colors. In fact, some of them still today are named after colors, at least in the manga. Um, like, of course, I'm talking about like red, blue, uh, gold, silver, and I guess Chris was named after Crystal. And that's when they started saying, well, you know what? Maybe we can name him whatever we want. So let's do Brennan and May and whatever else the other names. But I think Jade is a pretty cool name because not only does it kind of represent green and our character, the girl character in this game, wears the green outfit as well as I picked the grass starter, which is, of course, green. Not really working out right now, though, as you guys can see. Um, our Mega Dane doesn't really do too much damage, and this dude did have a Hyper Potion, so oh my goodness. Okay, that Ice Shard definitely doing some damage now. I think, um, might be time to bring out the Foley, or sorry, the, the Capig. <laughs> Capig's actually at level 17 already, so who knows? It's not gonna get quite to level 20 with this gym battle, but it'll get close to it, and then I'm gonna train it up, and we'll see that evolution. I just really wanna see what Capig's evolution looks like. Um, but another fun fact, which is totally random, but Jade is actually also my baby cousin's name, which I like the name a lot, actually. So, I don't know, I thought it was fitting, at least to show off the girl character. So, if you were wondering about that, then now you know another fun trivia fact, or something. And there goes Penglyph, though, finally. And Foliat is actually learning Pluck right now. I guess that is its level up move, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the Growl. I don't think it's really helpful against this gym, and I don't think I have any potions either. Oh man, things are not looking good. I really hope maybe we can get some rollouts in and just sweep through whatever the last Pokemon is. I think it's actually a Snome. So as long as I can get three rollouts going in a row, we'll be a-okay. The only problem is I've actually been missing a lot of rollouts lately. So come on, Capig, don't miss this last rollout. I really believe in you, buddy. Here it comes. The hail has stopped too. I don't really know why I keep stopping if it's just going to come right back. Here it is. You've gotten strong, but I'm not done yet. Oh, I really hope we one-shot it. It goes for Ice Rink. I don't know what that does, but here it is. Roll out, baby. No! Capig. Ah, oh, you didn't quite take it out. I think we might be done, though, if this kills us. Oh my gosh, the 1 HP survival. Capig, you are a monster. Oh man, that's so awesome. <laughs> I love you, Capig. Best Pokemon ever. Ho oh, ho, well done, well done. And of course, that means that Foliat is going to get his evolution. So I'm pretty excited about this as well. I mean, honestly, I feel like the main point of doing this was to see Foliat's evolution. But in the end, I ended up finding like a new love for Capig. It's just such a cute and powerful Pokemon. But here is the evolution of Foliat. Florabri. It's based off a of hummingbird, if you guys couldn't tell. Uh, the wings are actually leaves, which I think is so sick. 
definitely original. I don't think I've seen like a hummingbird Pokemon. There might have been one in I think uranium. I'm not sure actually now, but also learning air cutter, which is uh, pretty awesome. So yeah. Excellent! I haven't had such a battle in years! You and your Pokémon make a great team! Here, take the Blanket Badge! Once again, we're gonna get that Blanket Badge. I still think it's kind of a weird name for a badge, but sure, dude, I kinda did need a blanket. It's pretty cold in this gym anyway, so... The demo has once again ended, but like I said, there is one more secret Pokémon that we didn't quite get to catch at the end of the last episode, but... Hey, we also get to show off this awesome new evolution. Look at him! Oh, Florabri! That's so cool, man! So I think it actually is officially a grass and flying type now. It wasn't one before, but yeah, now it definitely is. I really like this Pokemon. Anyway, let's go ahead and heal up, and then we'll go to that area that I'm talking about. It's actually just in the Downward Cave. It's not like it's far away or anything. Um, you might remember there was actually a miner that was blocking the path to a certain area in the Downward Cave. I don't know what he said exactly. He just kind of made up an excuse. You know, the generic, okay, you can't go this way. And oh my gosh, did I really just run away that quickly? Did you guys see that back sprite for Florebri? Oh man. Okay, we're not running away from this one. Let's just, let's peep this out real quick because that back sprite though, it just looks so badass. Oh man, I can't say that word. I'm not supposed to say the, the, the last second half of that word, apparently. At least I said that once and, uh, People in the comments seem to get mad, but then again, I do try to be family friendly, so I'm sorry. Sometimes I just get way too excited and, and the words slip out. The truth is, I'm really not very family friendly outside of my own videos, but or the Munching Orange videos, or whatever I'm trying to say. Anyway, this is the guy I was talking about. The Pokemon weren't strong enough to take these Pokemon on. Oh man, there must be something tough in there if this guy couldn't handle him. Then again, we've never really battled that guy, so we don't really know how tough or nah he is, but... Yeah, you can see here there's a little mushroom cave. I was trying to check around and see if there's any hidden items, but it doesn't really look like it to me. But here is the new Pokemon that I was trying to hype up for so long. It's actually Kurtruffle. But since this thing is only level 5, I don't think we can battle it with Capig. I feel like Capig would just destroy it in one hit. But hey, he can make some good moves. Wait, I already made that joke, right? Level 5. Video game company, they're pretty good. Anyway... One more tackle from Snome, and then we'll just go ahead and go for the Pokeball. It's kind of funny, like, I happened to run into the, ran the the two only Pokemon that we never found in this playthrough, and I happened to run into them just like that, like, on the first try. Barely any effort, so... Cool, I'm not gonna complain. We've got Kerchruffle, poison-type Pokemon, needing little more than water and air to live. It can adapt to hostile environments where few other Pokemon would survive. And I guess that means this Mushroom Cave, um... Really not sure there, Kurtruffle, but it actually evolves based on status ailments. So if it's fainted, it'll evolve into a certain Pokemon. If it's put to sleep, it'll evolve into a different Pokemon. And I think if it's paralyzed, it evolves into a third different Pokemon. So unless we find a rare candy, I just don't really see a way of us evolving Kurtruffle because I guess if there was a trainer, maybe you could get it to level up and then send it in to die in the next battle, but... There's no more trainers left in the demo, at least, so I don't think we can actually do that right now. So, I guess until the next time, we really won't be able to evolve it into any of them either, because I can't think of any wild Pokemon that can put us to sleep or paralysis. So, Kurtruffle, really cool, unique idea for the evolutions, but I guess I'm not going to be able to show them off like I thought I would. Uh, but, hey, at least we've still got Capig, we can definitely evolve that. Hold up, my friends, it appears I've been trolled because... This guy just hit level 19 and is already evolving. Okay, well, I was thinking I would have to sit here and grind up one more level, but it looks like we don't because what? <laughs> I thought it was sideways, but Capping has evolved into Capybara. Wow, that's so cool. I really like that evolution. I mean, even, whoa, okay. You gotta chill out, man. You are running in place right now. I guess he's just super hyper as his evolution, but... Capybara is going to be Capig's evolution, so let's check him out. The Capybara species Pokemon, I, I think a Capybara is just the animal is based off of. That's a real life animal, right? I really like it. I like the design, so I just wanted to see what its evolution would look like in the game, even though we could have checked it out in the Pokedex, like I said uh, before, but there's something different about checking it out in the game. Plus, we get to see the overall sprite in action, and oh man, it looks awesome. I don't know why he runs around so quickly. He like literally can't stop moving. 
I guess that's gonna do it for this little segment. Uh, we could check out Capybara in battle, actually. So let me get into battle real quick, and then we'll see what its back sprite looks like as well. But yeah, I guess that's gonna be the end of this little segment. Other than that, so we'll go ahead and swap on over another new save file, pick out the fire starter, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But here is Capybara in action, just destroying everything in its path. What a cool Pokemon. So hey, if you do pick Foliat, I guess this is a good option to beat up that ice type gym with. In case, you know, anybody else is still playing this demo, except for me. And we're back to Professor Mangrove's lab, where this time around we're gonna pick the third and final starter of this game. So we had Ogwade, Foliat, and I actually forgot what the name of the last one is, but he's definitely the one in the middle of the table. Kittling, the Thunder Pokemon. So this time around we're gonna swipe right on you, buddy. Let's go, Kittling! And I guess that means that, uh, rival Sophia here is gonna pick Ogwade. By the way, I think, um, this kid's name is Simon, if you don't pick a name. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I thought it was interesting. Sophia and Simon, we got the double S names. They're all pretty good names, too, so let's take on this first rival battle, and, uh, then we'll speed our way through the game. I don't know, it should be pretty easily with, uh, or pretty easy with the Fire-type Pokemon, especially once we have that Ember, but I actually struggled in this little battle, um, with Folia. I think I actually even lost the battle, so this first rival battle in this game is no joke, especially... When you get critical hit, okay, well, at this point, it's not even my fault I lost, man. Like, we just got critical hit. That's just unlucky. Uh, oh, unless you keep using Tail Whip. Okay, I really don't think he can actually one-shot us right now. So, come on, critical hit. No, oh, please don't one-shot us. Oh, no, why? Oh, my gosh, it's like he gave us hope that we would win it, but then just nothing. We, we lost anyway. Come on, Sophia. How did you know you would win? You got two critical hits. You didn't even try to attack us that much. Whatever. I think she might have won if she would have not used Tail Whip that second time more. I don't know. It doesn't matter, man. It's the first round battle. What am I saying? Anyway, I guess now I will see you guys whenever Kittling is a little bit higher level. He's still happy, even though we just got our butt kicked in that battle. We're back finally with the final starter here, the fire type. Kittling, who is about to get level 16 and, of course, get that evolution going. So, at level 16, learning Flame Charge, that's actually really cool because I was just mentioning how I don't think he's got the best moveset so far uh, because Ember is a physical, or sorry, special attack, and it seems like Kittling is more of a physical attacker. So, now we got Flame Charge, which I don't actually know. I wasn't looking on if it was a physical or special move, but whatever. Kittling is going to be evolving now that he's level 16. And what will this final starter evolution hold for us? Well, I really have no idea. I didn't spoil myself too much as far as the starters go. Actually, I've yet to really have a good look at the final evolutions of them. But for the second evolution, Kittling is going to turn into Pyro. That's interesting. A really drastic change in color. I don't... wasn't expecting that, I gotta say. Also learning Smackdown because it is a rock type Pokemon and I guess uh, he loves wrestling I don't know man Smackdown looks pretty cool though uh, like I said I don't really know about the last evolution but I really like this this guy <laughs> he actually looks really cool so I guess all three starters ended up delivering as far as looking awesome with their evolutions but is it strong enough to take down a Pablosa let's find out wow that's a really awesome back sprite as well now I'm wondering what their final evolutions look like but I don't know, I still don't want to spoil it in case, of course, there is still an update to this game at some point, because the truth is we just have no idea right now. At least there, I haven't seen any updates on the project um, since it was last updated, which was a little while ago, so hopefully we get some kind of news as to what is coming up soon. Uh, we really don't know when, but for now, that is finally going to be the end of Pokemon Sage, and of course, we end off this journey by running into a billion wild Pokemon. It had to be fitting, man. I gotta say, we ran into a lot of wild Pokemon on this little journey that we had, but we caught every single one of them, and that's something that I've never really done before, so it was definitely interesting checking out this game, uh, despite its shortness. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, thank you so much. Um... Again, thank you so much for watching, and thank you guys for supporting the channel, sending in your fan arts. Everything you do is awesome, and I appreciate it a lot. So, till the next time we come back to Pokemon Sage, I'll be sitting here with our little goat pal in this random cave, hopefully not running into any more wild Pokemon. Peace out, homies!